so today, I want to first of all welcome you to the live podcast of The Road to Restoration. This is a good time to clap. Come on, people. And normally I do this podcast in a studio or at my house or in some other location, but we've been taking The Road to Restoration podcast on the road, literally. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we started in San Diego, and then now we're in Arizona. Tuesday we'll be in Tijuana. ¿Cuántos aquí saben? ¿Cuántos aquí conocen a Tijuana? Okay, and then from Tijuana in December we're going to go to Houston, Texas, and then in January we're going to Miami. Yeah, it's cool. Can I go? Yes, you may. <laughs> but today uh, we're here in Arizona with you because I genuinely believe not only through your ministry Revolution, which I absolutely love the name of your church. Uh, I believe that God wants to bring a heart revolution to Arizona. And yeah, you should give God praise for that. Today, I want to talk with everyone here, especially us on our podcast, The Road to Restoration. And those of you that are watching, uh, we are in Arizona, Revolution Ministries, uh, with Pastor Raul. And I want to talk about something. I want us to have this conversation about embracing the process of transformation. Um, you don't have to live long in Christianity or be a Christian uh, many years to experience the pressure of experiencing spiritual warfare while letting God change your life into a new person. And oftentimes, we want to arrive, but we don't want to take the trip. We want to talk about this process of transformation uh, and I want to start with the story from Genesis chapter 37. Uh, it's the story of Joseph. And the Bible says in Genesis 37, verse 5, that Joseph had a dream. He told it to his brothers, and they hated him even more. It's crazy. And then verse 9 says, And he dreamed still another dream and told it to his brothers and said, Look, I have dreamed another dream. Um. In Christianity, most of us know the story of Joseph, right, Pastor? I'm sure you've preached it. Joseph is probably one of the greatest dreamers of the Bible. Uh, some say he was about 17 years old when he had this dream. It took him 13 years to see the fulfillment of this dream. Um, everybody wants to arrive, but no one wants to take the trip. I don't know how many times I've taken my children to Disneyland, and they've said, Dad, are we almost there yet? Are we almost there yet? The same amount of time that it's always taken to go from Chula Vista to Disneyland, but the same question comes up, are we there yet? Because really, we all want to celebrate the moment that we arrive, but the hard part is getting there. Joseph has a dream, but he has to go through a process of transformation. Um, how many years have you been in the ministry? Uh, pastoring 10 years. 10 years. Yeah. Come on, give it up for 10 years in the ministry, church. When, how long has it been since you've been in the construction process of your church facility? So we started right after COVID, so 2020. In 2020. So before there, where were you meeting as a church? We were meeting in the back building back here. That's a 2,200 square foot building that's the size of this stage. Really? And so God spoke to you about transforming this property into what it is today. Right. When God gave us this property... Six years ago, he gave us a, a vision and a dream that we're going to uh, impact the whole community of the city of Tolleson. And so it was a dream. We were excited, but we didn't know there was going to be a process. And so uh, that process takes time. That process takes sacrifices. That process takes hard work. Process takes patience. And, 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 and uh, God transforms us in that process. What In the process, I'm going to start with your process of... Uh, transforming this property into what it is. It's a beautiful sanctuary. Uh, give us two or three things that you had to experience that you weren't expecting in the process of seeing this dream come true. Ooh, two or three things? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, so when COVID hit, so when we came into this property, there was probably like 120 of us. And that's when we thought we were as stronger as a church and we're stronger financially. And so when COVID hit, people stopped coming to church, like everywhere else. 
finances stopped coming in. And right after, right after COVID hit, I heard clearly from God that it was time to start building the church. And I, I told God, God, is it, are you serious? You know, there's no people, there's no money, and you want us to start now? And so I guess trusting God that he was going to provide when there was no money, there was nothing coming in, there was no people even showing up. So, so were you doing church online? We, we did church online for about a month. Uh, it was strong, and, and so like in the second month is when we came back into the back building. It took us a while. It took us like five months for the people to start coming back and, and, and connecting again. And so you didn't expect God to ask you to build this church at the time that your church was at 120 people. Absolutely not. Didn't make sense. It didn't make sense. I looked at the bank account, $10,000. What are we going to do with $10,000? And so how did God move? I mean, what were, I mean, you just didn't land here. What were some of the miracles that happened? So the, the moment that you get out of the boat and start believing God for miracles, God is going to start sending people in your life. And what happened with us is God sent us the, the right people, the correct people that would help us through this whole process. Uh, like I said, we had no loan. We did not have a loan. We did not have money in the bank. But the moment that God made it very clear to me to start the construction here, what I did is I went and rented a tractor, a Gannon. I rented a Gannon. I never had, had never ridden a Gannon. And so what I did by faith, I got on top of the Gannon, and I was just driving around the property. The brothers would come to church and they would think I was crazy, just driving and driving. When I took that step of, of faith, even though it looked crazy, God started sending people that would help us through the process. It's true. Whenever a person launches out in faith, you also have to depend on God to bring you the people to assist you in fulfilling the vision. That's what happened to Joseph. Joseph gets this dream. And then all of a sudden he gets rejected by the people who he thought was going to help him fulfill his dream. And they throw him into a pit. And the pit is a place, of course, of isolation. And I imagine Joseph thought to himself, I never thought that I was going to end up in a pit. I had this dream. It's big. And I think oftentimes what happens to us is that God gives you a dream. And you expect that the people who started with you would be the ones that would support you. But it takes <laughs> sometimes having to put it into a pit, being isolated away from everyone who you thought who would be with you to discover that God is with you and having God is all that you need. Amen, amen. And that's what we see happen with Joseph. So Joseph goes from receiving a dream. He goes into a pit. His brothers sell him off to Egypt. The Ishmaelites come and take him. And then he ends up uh, being sold to Potiphar, who was one of the captains of the guards of, of Pharaoh. He ends up in Potiphar's house and then he gets accused of sleeping with his wife. And all of a sudden, he's thrown into a prison. So Joseph has this big dream that he's going to do big things. And it seems like it goes from bad to worse. Did something like that happen for you when you started with the process of building this? Oh, definitely. Yeah, so at times it seemed that we were so close. And then at times it seemed that we were so far. And Pastor, just, just kind of thinking of what you're mentioning is that anytime God gives us a dream or anytime God gives us a promise, there's always going to be a process. It's, it's, when, we have, when a woman is pregnant, she has intimacy with, 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 with her husband and she becomes pregnant, but there's a process that has to happen before she could actually hold that baby that they're going to enjoy. And I think a vision and a dream, it's the same way. God will give us a vision. God will give us a promise. But there's going to be a profit process before we could embrace that. And that process for us was almost three years. What happened in those three years? A lot of things happened. Uh, a lot of things happened. A lot of, a lot of giants, a lot of obstacles, a lot of discouragement, a lot of questioning God. God, was it really you? Was it my flesh? And so it, God saw us through, though. You know, it took us a while, but God saw us through. What, was, what God was doing, he was processing us. He was transforming what do you mean by processing us process transforming my character transforming my faith strengthening my faith so i could trust in him going forward i believe this that a caterpillar doesn't need a miracle to become a butterfly it needs a process to become a butterfly and oftentimes we want god 
I'm not imagining that Joseph was in that pit. He was at Potiphar's house. He was in the prison. And I imagine he wanted a miracle. Mm -hmm. And so many times, this is what happens. We pray for miracles, and we ask God, get us out of this. And God sometimes says, no, I want you to be in that process, because it's in that process where I'm going to teach you a part of myself that you would have never known if I would have given you a miracle. Mm -hmm. So maybe you're going to get the miracle. And if you do, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Wonderful. But what about the people that don't get a miracle and God asks them to walk it out? Joseph didn't get a miracle. Joseph had to wait 13 years away from his family. 13 years, Joseph didn't have a Bible to read. Joseph didn't have a church to go to. He didn't have an online service. He didn't have an iPhone that he could see his favorite preachers on, to, on online. Joseph had to walk out his dream in 13 years without having anyone speak into his dream. And this is, this is, the, this is what I want to talk about. Is that sometimes in your process, you feel like God's abandoned you when the truth is God is walking with you. And God will never abandon you in your process. Some of us today, you're going through a process in your family. Some of you are going through a process in your finances. Some of you are going through a process in your marriage. Some of you are going through a process with your children. And sometimes our prayers are, God, rescue me, get me out of this situation. And God's like, I would do you, it would be like telling a caterpillar while it's in the cocoon, I want to hurry it up and get out. Well, if it does, you might end up being a grasshopper instead of a butterfly. Amen. And the reality is this, Joseph discovers something that I want all of us to discover today. And Pastor, I'm, I'm sure you'll relate to this. That when Joseph's brothers finally met him in Genesis 42, one of the things that Joseph's brothers didn't understand is who they were standing in front of. The dream that Joseph had, that his brothers would all bow before them, they didn't realize that they were living in Joseph's dream because Joseph became unrecognizable to them. He knew who Joseph, Joseph knew who his brothers were. But they didn't know who he was. And this is what I want to share with all of us tonight, okay? When you first came on this build, on this property, everyone saw a 2,200 square foot building in the back. But four years later, three years later, they drove down the same street. And when they turned to the right or turned to the left, they said, where is the property that we once knew that was a piece of dirt? Now it's a property that has become unrecognizable to us because look at the new that's happening. Amen. Amen. That is the goal of God in all of our lives. Amen. Yeah, give God praise for that. The goal of God, oftentimes we think that the dream is to get the dream. Our goal is to get the dream. God's goal is to get us to become more like him. Our goal is to show everyone that our dream came true. God's goal is to make us more like Christ. Our goal is to be able to tell everyone, I had a dream and now it's fulfilled. God's goal is to make sure that we make it to heaven. And sometimes what happens is our goals and our dreams, we're so fixated on them that we miss what God is doing through us in the midst of them. So here's the point. Joseph's dream was so big, and yet he thought his dream was to get all of his brothers to bow down to him. At the very end of the dream, what ended up happening is, what I believe was the real purpose of the dream, was to make Joseph unrecognizable to the people who once criticized him. And maybe what God's doing in your life right now is causing you to go through a hard process, a painful process, because what God wants you to become is unrecognizable to the people who only knew you through your pain, but now they're going to see you in your promotion. Amen. Amen. God wants to transform you. That's what I'm saying. God did it to Joseph. God transformed Joseph's life, not because he was perfect, but because he didn't give up. So what monarch is about, of course, monarch is a butterfly. The whole monarch ministry is about helping people embrace the process of transformation 
and to not give up. Imagine if you would have given up. Did you ever want to give up in your process? Every week. <laughs> what made you want to give up? Give us something real, Pastor. I don't want you to just say a lot of things. Something that really happened that made you want to give up. Something that really happened that made me want to give up. I just, uh, first we got excited. The whole church was excited. And after a while, when the dream takes long to come to pass, people uh, start losing hope and that excitement goes away. And a lot of times you felt so lonely, man. I would be here working 15, 16 hour days. I would get here at 5.30 in the morning, leave at 8.30, 9 o'clock at doing? night. What were you doing? We were working on, the, on, on anything. Well, no, hold I, it. You mean you were doing the construction? I was overseeing it. Okay. Overseeing it. And some, sometimes I would do some of the tractor work. And so I would say to myself, man, there's nobody here. I'm by myself. You know, where's all the excitement? There's, there's, there's nobody here. And, and I'm by myself. And it was a little discouraging. Yeah. So what would you tell someone right now that feels they're by themselves? And they don't have anyone... Or the people that they thought were going to support them don't support them. Well, if, if, if what was true to us is even though some people, it's not that they weren't there. They were doing their thing. It's, but God was with me. And God gave me the strength and God gave me the wisdom. And, and God was with me through the whole process. So God is with you. Even though people may not be with you or celebrate you or encourage you, God is going to always walk through you and be with you wherever you go. The Bible says this at the end of Joseph's story. And I want to give you hope. Whatever you're going through right now, the easiest thing to do is to give up on your call, give up on your family, give up on your children, give up on serving God. Because this is what I believe, Pastor. Most people don't give up because of a, of a sermon we preach. They give up because they don't understand the process that they're in. And when you don't understand the process, you start living by emotion and start living instead of living by Scripture. You start living by what you feel, by what you see, instead of by what Scripture says to you. The goal of Jesus is not to make us famous. Jesus didn't die on the cross to give us a good life. He didn't die on the cross so that we can have a happy life. He died on the cross so that we can embrace what it is to be a believer in Jesus, be transformed, because he's not preparing us to live on earth. Jesus is preparing us to live in heaven. And so many times this is what happens. We live, we come to church and we serve God and we expect that if we serve God, our life should go well on earth. Suppose God doesn't do anything else in your life. Suppose God never blessed you again and you're living in the misery that you're in. Would you still serve God? And I think this is what happens is that our focus is so much on finding heaven on earth that we forget that we can never find heaven on earth. But as long as we want to find heaven on earth, sometimes we'll give up heaven so that we can have heaven on earth. How many people today, because they wanted to be happy, gave up on heaven? How many people today, because they want to feel good, gave up on believing that God's will was better for their life. And so today, Joseph teaches us all something. And this is what I want to share with you. The Bible says, when Joseph's brothers saw that their father died, they said, Joseph is going to repay us. So they sent messengers to Joseph. Before our father died, he commanded, saying that you shall forgive, uh, that Joseph, you shall forgive your brothers, please. Forgive them of their trespass. And the Bible says, when Joseph heard this, he began to cry and weep. And you think, why did he begin to cry? It's because his brothers still didn't understand what God was doing in their family. They were still trying to cover their tracks because of what they did to their brother. And Joseph began to cry because he realized, you still don't get it. It's not about you, and it was never about me. And this is what he says. God didn't, <laughs> it says, am I in the place of God that you should be afraid of me? But as for you, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good in order to bring about this day the saving 
of many people. So this is what I want to tell you as we close today. Joseph's dream was never about Joseph. Joseph's dream was never about his brothers. Joseph's dream was never even about his family. Joseph's dream was that so that thousands, possibly millions of people could be saved. Had Joseph given up on his dream, I ask myself, how many thousands of millions of people would have perished? If Joseph would have given up in the pit and said, my brothers are rejecting me. If Joseph would have given up because he was sold. As we close today and as the band comes, I just want to say this to you, wherever you are. Don't give up. Don't give in. Because you have no idea how many people right now are connected to your obedience. Joseph said, you meant it for evil. God meant it for good. Have you known God to be like that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Today, I want to pray with you. And for everyone that's listening to this podcast, we just want you to know, everyone that's watching, we want you to know that regardless of where you find yourself today, God knows where you are. He knows where you need to be. And he knows how to get you there. Whether you find yourself today in the hardest moment of your life, discouraged, whether you find yourself today deeply disappointed, God knows where you are. He knows where you need to be. And he knows how to get you there. Thank you so much for being with us. And thank you for being part of the live audience of the Road to Restoration. Thank you so much. God bless you, Pastor. Thank you.